Hey, Bryce Tubbs here. I just want to come and answer the question, where to start your bookkeeping business? Now, I got asked this question, um, I got asked this question probably about three days ago. And the person who asked was saying that there are so many things that you need to do when you're starting out. And it's really overwhelming her, right? It's making the websites, the LLC, it's the insurance, it's um, going in a business license, it's making their business card, it's getting the brochures, it's all the different things that you know, are there that you, most people tell you you need to do in order to start the business, but it ends up causing a lot of confusion and makes it really hard for the average person to start. Now today I just wanna simplify the process of exactly where to start, what you need to do, what to focus on, and like, what are those main things? Now, before we go into that, if you want some help growing your business and you wanna sacrifice less, get your result faster, and really avoid a lot of the mistakes that most people make, I just recommend you go ahead and click on the link inside the description below to apply to book call with me to see if I can help you out um, inside the private mentorship program. If it's a good fit, I'll let you know. If it's not a good fit, I'll let you know that as well, and we'll make sure you have a game plan of what to do. Now, jumping into this thing, okay? The main reason why you need to avoid a lot of those things that most people do is because you need to focus on RGA, that's revenue generating activities, okay? Most people, what happens, and especially for me, I got started about seven years in my accounting and bookkeeping business, but I spent probably like three months making a website. I spent two months making a brochure, right? I took me about three weeks to go and get the LLC because I didn't know how to do it at, at the beginning. <laughs> so I first had to research how to go do the LLC. Then the process for the LLC in my state took me about two two weeks for them to get back, right? Then we had to get insured. It was just all this a mess, right? And that was like about six months that it took. And when I looked back, like the website was terrible. The brochures, we needed to like do it two or three more times. We had to go. It was just a mess. And I look up and I'm like, we're not making any money. Like we have no clients. Like what's going on? And for most people, they don't, they realize that too late, right? And by the end of that, especially if, if maybe you've been trying to grow the business or you know, it's a really high priority, you lose a lot of the enthusiasm that you had for starting the business and it caused you to actually like halt, slow your progress down and not really make it to the level that you want. So instead, that's what you need to be focused on in order to avoid a lot of that. So number one, okay, you need to be focused on your current sphere of influence. So when I say your current sphere of influence, this means looking around all the different relationships you've ever had in your life and then making those relationships either turn into clients or turn into referral partners. So for example, if you've been inside of corporate America for any amount of time, right? Maybe let's say you're a bookkeeper or maybe you're like a staff accountant, right? That means you've probably worked with CFOs, uh, director of finances, senior accounting managers, other bookkeepers, other staff accountants, um, maybe you maybe you have an alumni association with other CPAs, maybe you have a CPA association, maybe you have a college professor that used to own a business in accounting, but you have all these people inside of your life that could potentially refer people to you. Now your job is to learn how to tap into those people, okay? So number one, I'm always looking, okay, through my phone contacts, through my Facebook, through my LinkedIn, through my Instagram, who do I know that owns a business or who do I know that could potentially, you know, give me some money, right? And from there, I have a really, just a really organized script of what to say to get the people to, you know, tell you about the different pains and their problems and then actually ask you if you can help them with your accounting and bookkeeping, right? And then once you're able to do that, it doesn't really come across like salesy, right? Because you don't want to burn bridges with your friends by like selling them hard. You want them to actually make it their idea for you to work with them. And if you have the right script, it's very easy to do that. Now, a good example of someone doing this is one of my students named Lauren. Actually, no, even better. So like when I was first getting started, my first major client came from doing this. So I was inside of my church, right? And I was talking at probably every every like two weeks or so, I would talk to this guy. He, owned, he was a physician, right? He owned like a doctor's office. And I would talk to him, talk to him, ask him a bunch of questions about his life, questions about, you know, what it was like owning a really successful business. Because at the time, you know, I was just getting started. And I was like super like enamored with like, what happens when you start running a business? Like, how do you run a business? Like, is it possible for me to make any money? Like, I'm not making any money. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, give me some advice, right? And one day he was just like, hey, do you know, um, do you know Quincy? And I was like, uh, no, I, I don't know Quincy. Um, because I, 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 
you know, walked around, just talked to some people inside the church, but Quincy was kind of like standoffish towards me, right? So then the physician was like, hey, Quincy, come here. And they introduced us. And then it turns out Quincy had like this really nice sized business and he ended up paying me $3,000 per month, right? Now, what that came from was this relationship with this doctor, right? It's like, who do you know in your life that could potentially introduce you or pay you money um, to, you know, work with you just from doing that? But you have to look around to be really observant and really aware of your surroundings. Now, a good example is my student, um, Lauren. So when Lauren first started, I, we have this activity, it's called the low hanging fruit activity. It's why like a lot of the students, you might see them get like, you know, to that $5,000 dollar a month mark like in under like 10 days or something like whenever you've seen someone get like a really big result really quickly it's generally because of a low hanging fruit activity that we did in the first probably like two to three weeks that's why it's like i always invite people to join the mentorship program because the way that we go about doing it is a lot it's a lot more um unique than what you're thinking of and the way that you're thinking of it's going to take you a lot more time than the way that I think about it because I just know the shortcuts to take but for Lauren for example sh I told her hey go through go through your phone contacts any person who's ever owned a business any person that you know could potentially refer you clients I need you to go and run them to the script get them to go right so she pulled up her phone and the person in particular who ended up like working with her she went on like this blind date like I think it was like three years ago and they went out like one time she's like it didn't really go anywhere there's not really much chemistry but she reached out to him, she ran the script, and the person started talking about his business. And, you know, whenever sometimes, like, you'll hear someone talk about their business and, like, they're just kind of blowing smoke. You get there and it's, like, you know, it's just terrible, like, 10 transactions and they don't really have any budget. But in this particular case, the person was actually telling the truth. He actually undersold how well his business was doing because he didn't just have one business. He had three businesses. Now, when she ran the numbers, because I give you guys like a pricing calculator and we're working together. So you can just like see exactly what the scope of work is and know exactly how much to charge. So she ran it through and it's like the calculator said $1,200 a month, right? So she said the price. She did the script like I give you as a sales script. So she used it. Then she said it's like $1,200 per month per business, right? And it was like, okay, cool. And it all came from her going and tapping into her current and existing sphere of influence just from seeing like where are those opportunities that are coming. Now, you might be thinking, Bryce, I, I've, I'm already ahead of you. I've already thought of this. I've talked to every single person. No one wants to give me money. I posted on my Facebook profile and nobody that I know owns a business or nobody I know can help me. Okay, I understand. I, I, was, I was very similar when I first got started. So number two, you need to be thinking about who can send someone to you, right? So that means meeting somebody new who already has old contacts, okay? So I almost want you to think about you're like a, a lion hunting gazelle. So whenever you see like gazelle inside of the wild, right? The first thing that you're gonna see is the lion's like sitting on this like cliff, right? And he's looking down and he's just like looking and just, just like stalking, right? And it's just like, they're looking for patterns, looking for people, right? Because oftentimes there's this herd. Now inside of the herd, if you go inside of the herd, you're gonna get trampled, right? There's just too many legs, too many ones that are attacking. They all know these defense mechanisms inside a group. They practice their group defensive maneuvers, right? They don't let in outsiders. They just don't let in outsiders, right? But then the lion has to wait and wait and wait. And then one time the herd starts moving, but then maybe like one or two, they call them stragglers. People just don't really get the memo that they're all moving or they're independent thinkers and they want to think for themselves and they're going to wait just to kind of see what the move looks like, right? Lion notices that. Okay, one, two, that's a lot safer. Let me go and attack one of them, right? I'm going to look for who's the slowest because I've been analyzing them all day. And then from there, they're able to go and get their meal. And then from there they live. In our particular case, what that means is if, let's say for example, you just moved to a new location and you know nobody, or you live in like a really small town, it's very isolated, and the people that are there are very clicky. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And when I say clicky, it's more of like they're just not receptive to people who didn't grow up with them, right? Like, for example, let's say like maybe they all went to like the same high school. They all went to the same college. They're all part of the same alumni association. They all go to the same networking. Their kids are growing up. Their kids are going to the same schools, right? And it's like when you come in, they're like, oh, I don't know you. I don't want to talk to you. Sorry, I don't know you. I only do business with people I know. Okay, so how do you break into that? So a good example is actually one of my students named Millie. She's done this two times since we started working together. The first time was with what's called a Mary Kay director. So there was like these, the group of Mary Kay consultants, right? And that's that's kind of like this um, skincare company that they, you know, um, do a lot of network marketing. So they get friends and they, they all sell like their stuff, right? Now, 
what that person did was the person was actually coming and like there was just some random person like knocked on the door and said, hey, do you want to buy some of these products? Um, I noticed you, um, you've shopped at this store before and you know, my, data, my database says that you might be a good candidate for our product. She said, oh, you know, I don't really like that. I've tried it in the past, it broke up my skin. Long story short, they start talking, right? And then Millie goes, hey, I'm actually, you know, a bookkeeper. You know, that's, that's kind of what I do. I, I know you have a really great business. This is kind of what my business is. And the lady's like, oh, you know, it just turned out that, that one of the Mary Kay, um, like, associations had a falling out with their accounting firm, right? Can't go into too much details about it, but, like, yeah, they just had a falling out, right? So there's an opening for them, and whoever was actually going to do it could either take over, like, in the a lot of people inside that local organization, or they could, like, you know, go after stragglers. Now, in most cases, I always tell my students, do not go after solopreneurs unless that solopreneur has, like, a high volume of transactions or a lot of budget, right? Because it can be really hard to get those kind of people to want to pay because they're used to holding on to their money, right? But in this case, it was a little bit different because that Mary Kay director actually had about 100 people in her, you know, downline organization. That just means like the people who are underneath her inside of the, um, <coughs> the Mary Kay kind of organization. So what basically happened there was Millie told me about the situation. She said, hey, how should I approach this? You know, the director said that she wants my help. I said, okay, cool. So we sat there on, on like a coaching call. It took me like f between seven to 10 minutes to like write up like a, a, a letter. It's basically just like the script that like how you can actually talk about it and get the people to want to work with you, right? So then what we did was she was like, whoa, bro, you made that really quickly. I was like, yeah, that's one of my skill sets is being able to write stuff out that gets people to want to buy, right? So then, um, I had her send it to the director of the Mary Kay, right? So the person who's the director of the Mary Kay could send it to all of the people below her, right? Because if Millie was to send it, the people would be like, oh, I don't know who you are. But if the director sent it, then it made it really easy for them to trust Millie, right? And then when they came to her, it was very easy because then she got the director to sign up with her. Then from there, she started getting more and more and more and more and more. And now her main mission is how can I get the full 100 people underneath her to sign up with me? Now, in some cases, if you're getting people who are like, you know, really small transactions, like a Mary Kay consultant when you're first getting started, it's generally going to be really small, right? So <clears throat> if you only got one and you only got $100 a month, it's not really that significant. When you get 70 to 100 paying $100 a month, that's where it's like, okay, this is some good money, you know, $7,000, $10,000 a month. And that's why we kind of approached that situation because it was a very, very, very unique situation, very time-based that you had to be there and you had to know exactly who to talk to. And that's why it's so important to be able to tap into that network and know who can send clients to you, okay? Now, hopefully you've enjoyed this video so far and you just kind of get an understanding because like if you if you've noticed we have not mentioned a website we have not mentioned an llc we have not mentioned insurance number reason why for, generally for llc right it's about protecting yourself from liability generally for insurance it's the same thing you want to make sure that if you have like you know eno insurance just in case there's like an error that you make that really harms the business right you want to protect yourself but if you have no clients who's going to sue you <laughs> Like, that's why it's like you have to get that revenue first because until then, until you're making at least $600 a year, you're considered a hobby. You're not really in business yet. You have to go make money first because now you're in business. Now you have something that actually is substantial and now you have something that can start generating cash for you. But until you start generating that cash, all these different support functions don't really make sense because there's not really anyone who's going to go. Now, you might talk to like a, an insurance person. Or you might talk to a web design person, they're going to tell you it's the first thing you got to have. But, you know, from my experience and working with over 150 people inside the mentorship program, you don't need that at first. You need that eventually, but when you're first getting started, you generally just need to move fast. You need to go get some clients, and then from there, you can start becoming more official. Now, hopefully this video has been really helpful for you. Now, as always, I always invite you to go ahead and click on the link inside the description and book a call with me because you have two options. Number one, you can go and you can take this information. You can try it on your own, but there's just so many different things that I can't address inside of a video, like how to talk to the person when you first get started, how to set the agenda on the sales call, how to make sure the person has a budget, how to make sure the person has a budget but is willing to spend that budget, how to make sure that you're talking and hitting all the pain points, how to make sure you can close on the objections, what happens if they say, hey, I need to go talk to my spouse, what happens if they say they need to go talk to their dog, what happens if they, you know, all these different things, but I can't address it because everything is situation by situation. So option one is you go and try on your own, you do a lot of trial and error, you know, maybe you figure it out, maybe you don't, and you end up like quitting the business. Option number two, okay, this is how you go with less sacrifice, ease, and speed.
speed. Okay, that's partnering with me inside of the paid mentorship program, making sure you know exactly what you need to do from our proven process. So you actually grow a lot faster. You know, I want you to be on our, our wall of testimony. We have an internal wall of testimonial over, I think it's over about 70 different video testimonials at this point from students that are happy with the program. They're super excited. We've we'll all made it to, you know, some sort of income goal. Generally, it's above the $5,000, $10,000 when we do the, uh, the recaps. So I want that to be for you, okay? I want to make sure that you can succeed. I want to make sure you can go. Now, I am financially motivated to make sure you succeed, but nevertheless, we want to make sure that you do, right? Because if you pay money to me, I want to make sure that my name's on it. We got to protect our reputation. So if you want some help, go ahead and click on the link inside the description below to apply to see if I can help you out. Now, some people might be a little bit afraid of the investment amount, right? They might say, Bryce, I don't really have a lot of money. Now, we do have third party funding. So about six months ago, I partnered with a funding company. And inside of that, they allow us to be able to make the program more accessible to people who might not have the cash flow up front to pay for it, right? Because if you're starting a business, sometimes you don't have a lot of cash. Now, I always, inv I always invite people to use their personal money to fund the business, but for some people, they just don't really have it, right? So generally what this funding does is we can give up to about two to five year terms, right? Anywhere from like from three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, all the way up to five, five years, depending on what your situation is, to make sure that you can grow. Now, depending on what type of loan you have, there's different, um, you know, things you need to do to qualify. It's not for everybody, okay? So if you want some help, you want to be able to grow your business. Now, we've taken out the investment amount. Like, it's, it's easy. Anyone can do it. It's more about are you ready to go and reach your goal? If you are, click the link, book a call. If you're not quite ready, I'll see you inside the next video. There's no harm, no foul. And I will talk to you soon, and I'll see you either in the next video or I'll see you on the call. Have a great rest of your day.